worst enemies because you take away this this human aspect of somebody and you expect them to keep their sanity. And I, I was I was losing it. I was fucking losing it. And let me tell you yeah. why too, because number one, I couldn't taste, which is one of my biggest joys. Because when I caught it, and I wasn't sure that I had it 100% in the hotel, um, I, I was just making sure I didn't want to infect Mario, which was yeah. a good thing I did go there. And then I tested again and lo and behold, I did have it after my taste went away. But I was like, but when I was in the hotel, I was telling myself like, look, five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast Quarantine Edition. Uh, audio's a little fucked up right now because we're just doing it through the computer because your boy caught COVID. <laughs> you, you're, you're a little bit too excited for that. <laughs> no, man. Let me let me tell you something, dude. It's funny. I've been really quiet about my, my COVID situation just because I know Bart came out with the video and then Tim came out with this thing and everybody knows that, you know, we got it from Wuhan Bart. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're as bad as um, our, our outgoing president right now. You just call him Wuhan Bart. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, look at the way I look. I'm Asian. I'm fine. Oh, man. Okay. All right. All right. The Ching Chong Cops. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to, you're going to take every comedic license out. Hey, guys, just so you guys know, um, you want me to tell them the thing with Dave Chappelle said and, and, and Trump? Oh, yeah. Tell them. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, David was unfamiliar with uh, when the president was saying um, some very racist comments and when he called the coronavirus the Kung Flu. And I was like, man, David, did you see this? Like, he wrote it on this thing. He said this reporter confronted him. As I'm telling David this story, instead of him being, uh, and this is before David, David Chappelle came out and said this, but uh, David just started laughing. He's like, that shit's hilarious. <laughs> and, now, and that was the moment when I knew my friend was more comedian than, you know, than an uh, Asian uh, individual who should be offended by the racism behind this label. It just came out of the wrong person's mouth. That's all that it is, because that's a pretty fucking fire diss. That's hilarious, dude. You're, well, he said that, and then uh, and then a few months or weeks later, then Dave Chappelle like, said, that shit's hilarious. And then I was like, damn, Dave Chappelle and, and, and David Silver are kind of in that same like <laughs> wavelength like, right now. Came out with the joke before I did. <laughs> that was forever a Dave Chappelle joke. Fuck. I know, and I was like, damn, I mean, I think you transitioned, man. You and Dave are, are vibing the same way. You hear the same piece of news and you thought about it. He's like, damn, that's hilarious. I was like, oh, shit. I mean, he's definitely influenced the way that I think. So it's like, I'm just uh, uh, a, a little blip of what he is. Because, you know, you know, like when I first started doing YouTube and stuff, all, all that inside jokes were all Dave Chappelle jokes and everybody knew it. So it was like, well, yeah, it make we, always borrow, we always borrow styles from the people that we appreciate. Oh, 100%, you know I mean? man. Yeah, but I've had COVID is such a weird thing because... You know, I didn't, you know, I'm relatively careful. Like I wear can 95 masks, um, not around a lot of people. And so, you know, there was the fucking Mike Tyson fight and I just had to go see the Tyson fight. And then uh, Bart oh. invited me over to go, go go to the Tyson fight. And the weird thing is, is like usually when he invites me over to, to go to a fight, uh, it's usually, it's like most of the time it's just me, him and Gio. So yeah. there's not a lot of people, but then... I didn't know how many people were going and I didn't realize that there was a lot. And then, you know, Tim was there, I was there, which, you know, Tim and Tim already uh, mentioned. So I'm not saying anything new, but when we went there, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And a part of me was like, I shouldn't be here. You know, I'm like, I don't like this. And then yeah. lo, lo and behold, I, I started feeling funky around like uh, Friday night and then I uh, canceled everything on Saturday. And then look, so this, this was uh this was the Thanksgiving Friday, right? Or, or this past Friday? This was this uh, past Friday, so like 10 days ago. And then okay. um, I was like, um, I, I'm feeling a little funky. So I decided to cancel everything on Saturday because I didn't feel symptomatic. I just didn't feel myself, you know? And yeah. uh, I remember other people telling me like one of the things that they saw that was a symptom was feeling weak. And fatigue, fatigue is very common. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's a very apparent type of fatigue too. So if you guys are out there and you know, you're like, well, what is feeling tired mean? You're going to know what it feels like. It feels off. It feels like your body is just yeah. not, it's not, things aren't firing in all cylinders. And so, yeah. uh, didn't have a sore throat, didn't have a cough. I didn't even have a fever. I didn't have any of that stuff. I just felt tired. And then, uh, I canceled everything. I, I stayed at home until I could get a, a, a kit. And then we were doing the in-home kit test. And because I know how far you have to go, because I've got the, I've gotten the test like seven or eight times already. Yeah. That shit, <laughs> I should fucking hurt. But I saw the, uh, it's like a pregnancy test, right? So you get the two lines means you have it, one line means you don't. So for some reason, okay. I read that two lines meant that you didn't have it. 
And so I saw two lines. I was like, your boy is good. And I was chilling in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I was chilling. And then I stopped for a second. I'm like, I bet you I misread this. Hold on a second. I went back. I'm like, ah, fuck, I got it. So I got a, um, I went and I got a hotel. I let, I let the staff know. And they were okay with it. They just, nobody just came into the room. So I don't know if they were hurting for customers or something, but um, yeah. How's, uh, how's Maria? How's she doing? She's good. So she tested like three times um, okay. since then. So it's been about 10 days and she's tested multiple times since. And uh, she has no symptoms. So it's good. It's good. Day 14, see what happens. Um, I've been hearing that um, people, uh, you were telling me, right? I think it was you. You told me that people who in the household it seems that other people aren't getting it except for like maybe one or two people. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you, you know, again, it, everything we're saying is like, is this like, it's such a moving target. Cause we're learning as we're going, right? Like I think if anybody watches Fauci, if anybody watches like the, you know, CDC, FDA, like all, all these, all this knowledge is, is coming in. And then a lot of information we get from like people like you, like, you know, like you said, I didn't get the short, I didn't get the sore throat. I didn't get the cough, you know, I was fatigued and whether, whatever other symptoms. Um, so I just moved to New York City and um, the clinic where I work at is in the Bronx, one of the places that was hardest hit with um, COVID mortalities. Oh, um, really? and it turned, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and it's, 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 there's a lot of factors that go into it, but it's predominantly, um, you know, black and brown. So a lot of these minority communities, which we already know that they are at a, you know, disadvantage when it comes to just kind of um, infrastructure and there's a lot of things that are set up against them. So when COVID hit, you just, you see a lot of people dying disproportionately. Um, anyways, um, one of the things that was interesting, every, almost everybody in my, the clinic that I work at, um, COVID went through there like a wildfire. Um, so oh, then wow. one of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't know who had it first, but one of my colleagues, um, she had it and, and her husband, um, you know, he, you know, whether it's love or, or, or pride or whatever, he was just like, I ain't, nope, I'm sleeping in the same room. We're going in this together. You know, that, that old love, you know, anyways. Yeah. And, and she said, you know, he never got it. And he tested a few times and they did antibodies later on. And she came back positive. She, she, was, she had a positive swab and she had positive antibodies. He never had a positive swab and never had positive antibodies. And they shared a bed the whole time that she had it. I won't, rec I don't recommend it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, you know, course, yeah. but but I mean, but that's an interesting phenomenon. We're just seeing that um, some people and their partners never got it. You know, like like one person had it, and they didn't like they didn't even split apart. So it's just so much. And then I have a, a, a number of patients who are telling me symptoms that I don't even know about. Um, you know, like we know about we know about like the sore throat, the cough, the fevers. Uh, fatigue is very common with like you know just viral illnesses in general, like the flu. Um, a lot of GI stuff happens with this, so like di diarrhea. Is it diarrhea, diarrhea. Um, and then um, a few of my patients talked about like their ha hair thinning. So, you know, and that's not something that we talk about either. So when this fool told me, me that shit, I was like, no! <laughs> Join the club, baby. You about to get hats. You about to be chilling. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, black people look good, but not me, fool. I look like I made yeah. like a, a spiritual mom choice if I did that shit. <laughs> Bro, we're about to get these scullies together. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, if I start wearing scullies. <laughs> That should be funny. <laughs> oh, I would die laughing. I think the worst part for me was the um, the loss of taste because I can't taste. Yeah. Anything. So you yeah. know, for me, obviously, a huge part of my career is predicated on my palate. So uh, just yesterday, for the first time, not the, not all of it's back, but like maybe two percent, three percent of it's back. So I was having a video call, and as we were uh, we were doing like a Zoom dinner type of thing with a, with a couple of friends of ours. I couldn't taste shit. So I ordered food and I'm just ordering soup just because it's the easiest to eat. I'm not, I can't really taste anything. Eating it, whatever. And then I went to go get this yogurt and I put it in my mouth and I was like, this lightly tastes like banana. And I looked at the yogurt thing and it said banana. And I swear to God, your boy teared up. I was like, yo, I can taste again. That shit was fucking crazy. Here's the thing, man. And I think like this is, is perspective for me, right? Because I've been in, you know, away from people for 10 days. Like, I, I think problematically, a lot of people are saying these small things. Like, oh, we already know, like, you could affect people who are elderly, people who have underlying conditions. That's a huge issue, right? But then when, it, when, when people talk about somebody who's young and they're like, well, if I give it to somebody who's young, they're going to survive. Well, at the same time, who the fuck wants to be in quarantine for 10 days? Like mentally, it's really, really difficult. It's yeah. fucking hard. 
you know? And I think like, I've never been tested mentally like this um, because I'm, I'm not, I, I am kind of an introvert to a certain extent, but I like to go outside. Like that's a huge part of my being. Yeah. Like I need to be outside. Yeah. If I don't, I start to lose my fucking mind. This is probably the closest thing I've ever felt to depression. Like I never ever felt like this before. And to be sitting in a room knowing that I can't be around people because I'm concerned I'm gonna give it to somebody else. And on top of that too, if I got this virus during a time I had to do a show, I would have lost a shit ton of money too. So it goes beyond just, you know, somebody, yeah. Um, dying or you know being fatally ill from this it affects them mentally like and you know and I started getting like uh I didn't know that the lower back pain thing was a was a symptom my uh that shit was muscle yeah. muscle aches you know yeah people have it different places but yeah man how, how are you doing now the 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 muscle aches are gone uh okay. no fever I got a little bit of my taste back but definitely don't feel like myself 100 percent like I don't feel like I could bike you know, the 15, 20 miles that I normally do. You gotta, you gotta ease, ease back in, man. Did you, uh, did you ever get a fever? I might have, but I probably slept through it. You didn't have a thermometer or anything? No, but I don't okay. remember. Yeah. Oh, I had a fucking crazy headache. The, uh, yeah. the yeah. headache was weird. It was a very unique headache too. It wasn't, it felt like sinus pressure, but then I didn't have a plug nose. I didn't have a stuffy nose, but okay. it was, it was sharp pain throughout the sinus and around the, the head here. And then I took Tylenol. It didn't do shit. So nothing was helping it out. I just had to just, just bite down on the mouth guard and just go through it. So when I, uh, that, that headache part in the first three days was probably the worst part about it. Um, super sensitive to light. Could it, it didn't feel like a migraine. Didn't feel like a headache. It was something unique on its own. Yeah. Yeah, no, man, it's, it's, it's just, I, I know that we're going to be studying this virus for you know, and, and, it, and, and, um, the complications from it for many years, like, it, like we don't understand, Ho hopefully, you know, we don't see a lot of transformation and this thing staying around. Like I, I have, um, you know, I have some hope in, in kind of what we're seeing with, uh, Moderna and Pfizer and all that stuff. But, you know, I, we also know that some viruses change, um, and, and, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens as far as like this virus in time. But if, if, even if like we, if we survive all this, the vaccine comes out, we do great. We're going to be looking into this virus and like this variety of symptoms that are caused in different people, this different strains. Cause now there's talk that the strain that came to New York was from Europe, right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to directly from um, China. Um, and, and so that a lot of the people came from Europe, brought the strain that was in New York. So, it, it, you know, and then I think when you think about just kind of geography and the proximity of Asia to like California and the West Coast, um, it would be make, make more sense that certain strains probably came directly from that side of the world. So, you know, it, so I, I'm, I, I have a suspicion that scientists, doctors, um, everybody's gonna be looking into the, the variations of this uh, virus for many years and kind of like, why it caused so many different symptoms and different people and complications. Some people have problems with like, like we talked about, like fatigue, taste, smell. Some people have the classic symptoms that they originally warned us about. Some people didn't have anything. Some people got crazy sick. Some people did not. Uh, and, then, and then what we talked about earlier, some people's partners were good. They slept in the same room, they talked to them, you know, and, and nothing got transmitted. So there's so much that we don't know. Um, but I think I'm, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're doing better, dog. You know, I mean, uh, I know that you just got that that Netflix show, and you know, I know that we plan to retire together and leave our women. Hey, you gonna have to retire, me. <laughs> you know how fucking sad I am as a human being. Like, I, I I think day three or day four, for about three to four hours a day, I looked outside my hotel window and I just looked at people like a fat cat. <laughs> now, now I know why fucking cats do that shit. I just sat there watching people for three hours a day, like just looking. Cause you know, you, you could only do so much like computer work, you know, right when you wake up. So I'm sitting there just looking at people walking around. And I'm like, you fucking lucky sons of bitches. What just, just imagine, dude, just imagine like uh, people who are stuck in hospital beds for multiple stays, you know, and or, or just like even people like who are, who are locked up and are in solitary confinement. You know, like even oh. people who haven't been, even people who haven't been convicted, like you know, Khalif Browder and all that. Like, I mean, oh. I, it's just, it's just, it's such a, it, it's such a dehumanizing thing to be 
isolated for extended periods of time. Um, yeah, man, it's so weird because I was, I was, you know, sitting in this hotel. I, I know it sounds so like first world problem, right? But there are certain things that humans need, right? Obviously, socialization, I think, is one of them. It's very key. Sunlight right. and activity. You take that away from a human being, like it, it, like a little bit of your spirit dies. Yeah. Now I'm looking at this prison system, like you know, I know these people. Yeah. Some of these people are really hardened criminals, but fuck, yeah. man, like I don't know if I would wish this on some of my worst enemies because you take away this this human aspect of somebody, and you expect them to keep their sanity. And I, I was I was losing it. I was fucking losing it. And let me tell you yeah. why too, because number one, I couldn't taste, which is one of my biggest joys, because when I yeah. caught it. And I wasn't sure that I had it 100% in the hotel. Um, I, I was just making sure I didn't want to infect Mariel, which was yeah. a good thing I did go there. And then I tested again. And lo and behold, I did have it after my taste went away. But I was like, this podcast is brought to you by CBD Farmhouse. If you haven't heard of CBD Farmhouse, well, you will very soon because CBD Farmhouse, when it comes to their products, stands out above the rest. And I'm not just saying that because I actually use a lot of their products. Uh, before they became a, uh, a, a sponsored brand, I was actually using them even before that. So the, the freezing roll-on is money, specifically if you're sore or if you have some kind of aches. I use it all the time. Specifically, I kickbox and I work out and that has been a savior. If you haven't had their gummies, use it when you're uh, feeling anxious. If you have anxiety attacks a lot, CBD gummies are a godsend. And on top of that, if I just want to sleep really well, I eat one of the gummies right before I sleep and it just helps me to relax. For all my Genius Brain listeners, you can get 15% off any order if you just plug in code brain at checkout. That's at cbdfarmhouse.com. Once again, cbdfarmhouse.com and use code brain to get 15% off today. As long as I have my taste, I'm fine. I'm going to just eat up, jack off, and I'll be perfectly fine. And so I just sat there. I ordered lemon pepper wings, blue cheese dressing, and uh, a, a bacon cheeseburger. I sit down. I drink my Sprite. I could taste it. Cool. I have a bite of the uh, lemon pepper wing. I'm like, oh, it's a little bland, whatever. I go yeah. for the second wing. I eat it, nothing. My yeah. fucking heart sank. I was like, yo, yeah. my taste is gone. So all yeah. I got left is jacking off. And, <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. When you're depressed, uh, it's not even an option on the table. So I'm just sitting there like, I got nothing. I got nothing. And your boy don't even watch <laughs> porn either. So I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. Uh, in my in my head, I'm thinking of that Dave Chappelle uh, story when he talked about Louis C.K. and it's like, just like sad. <laughs> it's like coming out of so like a blade uh, boat working <laughs> off my chest, dude. Oh, uh, bro. Uh, yeah, no, nah, man. It's 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 definitely. You know, I think it's, dude. I mean, I I, I think uh, there's a couple things that are are going to be very formative for people of our generation. You know, um, I don't compare this to the great depression, but I think, you know, this pandemic and the quarantine is going to have uh, definite effects on our socialization when we come out of this, how people date, how people go out, like they, you know, um, how people feel about illness, people's cleanliness, I hope. Um, I feel like we're going to start wearing masks. You know, like we, uh, people in America used to be always just looking at Asia, like why are they wearing masks? And now I feel like, everybody like for every like flu, man i'm actually as a doctor i'm kind of excited like next you know after covid is settled and just flu season coming around people just like masking up i'll be like mm, look at this public health yeah. like, <laughs> look at all these people taking these uh you know these each other's health into <laughs> yeah Yo, these mask companies made a killing dude like a fucking killing dude you it's know a uh, part part of me like Ethic, ethic, eth ethically, I don't own any stock in any like pharmaceuticals, but I wish I had some money in Pfizer. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't have any <laughs> disclaimer, but uh, but if I did, man, you may not see me no more. You might be like, yo, let's do a Zoom. I'm out here on the beach. Like, what's up, bro? Where you at? Oh, the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> yo, why, why is everybody, I'm always, con I don't know anything about like the whole vaccine thing, right? Because, uh, you know, pe there's a whole bunch of memes and things popping up saying like, oh, like if you take this vaccine right now, there's a lot of adverse effects. Well, what, what, what are the like, what are the downsides of being like the first person to take a vaccine? Is it really that big of an issue or are people just kind of like uh, blowing it out of proportion? No, no, I, th I think so. Um, you know, I, I think it's natural 
um, that people have questions, right? Especially if we're introducing something that didn't exist a year ago to people and we're saying like, hey, we want to vaccinate a good majority. Like what, what's a Joe Biden's thing? hundred million people uh, vaccinations in a hundred days or something like that. Yeah. Um, right. So I think um, for the last decade or so, we, we've been seeing um, a lot of people, like some movements uh, questioning the validity of vaccinations. Again, I would say a lot of the, like the caveat for a lot of these vaccines that we've had, you know, they've been around for a very, 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 very long time. There was a, a, a paper that came out in, in um, I don't remember what years, but it was probably a little under a decade ago in the Lancet. It's like uh, the UK's biggest like science journal. Mm -hmm. um, and at, at the time, um, somebody was correlating um, vaccinations and immunizations with autism. And, um, and then people were saying like, oh, it's gonna cause autism. And there's like a lot of stuff and, and, and all that. And since then, that paper was uh, debunked or revoked, and then that person um, lost their medical degree and all, you know, their license and all that. Um, um, and and a lot of papers contrary to that have proven it's like there is no correlation. The thing is that like around the time that kids are getting immunization, around like you know a, a few months, like you know they, they get it at at like two, four, six months. And then, you know, in the first two years, they're getting a bunch of vaccines. And then we start seeing the development and, and, and the timing that we see of like autism kind of coming around like early is probably around like three-ish. So like that, like people start saying like, it must be these vaccines, my baby was fine, but we gave them all the stuff and now they developed this. Um, so there was like a timing thing, but there was never really, there was no evidence and there's lots of money that was put into trying to figure out if there, because people had some legitimate concerns, like yeah. parents who, but kids that had like autism, they had legitimate concerns. Like, did I do this to my child? Which I think yeah, any, yeah. and then and then all the evidence pointed to no, right? So I think since then there's been a big like question the norm of like vaccinations and all these things. Um, but I think as a society we can't um, you know underestimate the benefit that we we've, we've had. Like we've got rid of polio, right? Like. Uh, we've gotten rid of like smallpox, all these different things that like that we've eradicated because we've been really, really good. And then we started seeing a resurgence of certain things like measles. You remember like that Disney, I think it was Disneyland break, like That's outbreak. Right. Yeah, because then you have these diseases that have very high infect, infect, uh, infect, like infection rates, like in the upper 90s. Damn. Um, yeah, yeah, it's that infectious, right? So. And then, but then you stop vaccinating children and you lose what everyone's trying to achieve, which is like herd immunity. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, all that go, you know, all that feeds into what we're in now, where people are still like, what the F are we putting into our, our bodies? And then we have social media. Everybody who has an opinion can put out a video, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't necessarily have, you don't have to be an expert to put out a video. Yeah. So you could put, you could put up, you know, QAnon people could put up this, uh, anti-vaxxers could put up this. Um, you know, the head of the FDA could put up a video, but it could just drown down and everything. It may not be as sexy, you know, it may not be as well produced. Yeah. Um, and, and it goes back to that. We talked about with like Denzel, like it's the, the standard of news is no longer accuracy and, you know, fidelity is it's what's, what's first, what comes out, you know, what's hitting you. So there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of doubt, a lot of all this mixed together. So in short, you know, the, the, the vaccine is still held to a very high rigor of testing. And there's a lot, a lot of evidence that needs to be passed before something will get approval. Um, there's usually a, um, you know, after the, the organizations like Pfizer approve, um, you know, make a vaccine, do their own internal like tests. There's usually, um, uh, a rep, like a, a repeat of those tests by an external party, like so, like the FDA, or like other organizations that are like, hey, can we recreate the same results with the vaccine? And then there's usually a period where you follow the results um, after you know, like after something like after a medication has been out in the public, then there's always you always go back and you check to make sure it's efficacious, it's safe. Yeah. Right. You, you, you have a, you have a, you have a group now that you're able to do. It could be as large as like a couple thousand people. It could be as small as like a, a few hundred. Um, but, you know, I, I think 
the part that I think what I keep hearing about a lot of the concern is for people being like, well, we don't know what the long-term effects are. And, and, and I think, I think that's fair to a, you know, to, to have a certain amount of, of, you know, of question um, about what are the long-term effects. Um, You know, I think, but I think what we're seeing is, is that most of these techniques and most of these things have been used before. So um, people are looking at it and being like, hey, you know, this should be safe. We put it in like a big group of people. We saw some sore arms. We saw some mild symptoms. It's pretty efficacious. I think it's better than the alternative when we're losing more, you know, 3,000 people a day. Yeah. Um, so so it, it starts becoming, it's like, you know, I we don't, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't see all the complications that are going to come from it. But right now, I think what most experts are believing is that they're going to be mild, if anything. Like if you look at, um, I think the the flu vaccine, I think the there's a there's immediate risk of like anaphylaxis, where that is like your your throat closing up, you can't breathe, and what people need an EpiPen for, like you know people who have really bad peanut allergies. Yeah. There's like a I think it's like one in one million. So for every like million people who get it, one person will have an episode of anaphylaxis. Um, so, but I think for, for society, when you worry about how these viruses can kill the people, like, you know, people, like we've lost over 200,000 people, yeah. um, you know, um, you start thinking about, it was like, well, one in 1 million could have this life threatening complication immediately. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, people may have some light, you know, uh, cold-like symptoms or sore arm. But I think that is better than, you know, losing a whole swath of our population, shutting down our, you know, all the interactions that are so important to us feeling like a community, like people. So yeah. I, I, th- I think that that's part of the, the question, right? So I get, I get where some of the concern comes from. You know, I, I understand you're just like, well, you know, we haven't seen this thing. It's new. Right. Um, but I think people, there are testing it in a lot of people. They've, they've tested in a lot of people. Like they've already, it's already started in the UK. Doctors are going to get it first. I hear, I hear the, the current presidents, living presidents, minus uh, Sands, uh, El Trumpito are going <laughs> to receive it as well. Um, I don't think Jimmy Carter is going to get it though. He's still alive, right? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I pulled like a thousand years old now. Goddamn. Yeah, I think he's still alive. I, but I think he definitely had some um, close calls in, in the past few years. Yeah. But yeah, man, I don't, sorry, that was a long answer. But, you know, I, I get where the, I, it's just like there's a lot of history to what the anti-vax movement came from. Yeah. And, and then, and I think there are some concerns that are little, are, that are very extreme, right? That are, that that you're like, hey, that's, you know, that's really far-fetched. And then I think there's like the everyday kind of like, hey, you know, I get your argument. I understand. Um, I'm still a little hesitant. I don't know if I want to do this. And, yeah. you know, and I, get, and I get those people too. Like they're, they're not the time, they're not the people who think there's like a chip in the vaccine or, or it's going to turn them into zombies or anything like that. They're just like, hey, like I get it. The FDA did a bunch of testing. They had an independent like committee who ruled it has to be safe. There, you know, there's multiple committees on different continents and different countries that have ruled it to be safe and are implementing it to, to start the vaccination process for their societies. Um, so I get a bunch of scientists are on board and say, hey, like it looks like the studies that these companies are presenting are, you know, they they are what they say they are. They're as effective as they say they are, you know. So we got to green light it. So it's, it's one of those things. So, you know, so there'll be a lot of people who are going to want the vaccine initially. And a lot of people who are going to be like, I will wait. And I, yeah. and I get what, and I get what they're coming from. I think for me, like personally, I'm going to get it. Like I, I work with a lot of people. I'm here in New York. Um, you know, I, uh, my parents aren't the youngest in the world. And, and, you know, and I would feel devastated if I got, gave it to like one of my patients or my partner or, my family. Yeah. Well, you can always just get COVID like me. I got the vaccine in my system, baby. You know how it is. I can't be killed. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I can barely lift my arms. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Not exactly how it works, but okay. That's, not, that's, that's how it works, dude. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not, 
That's not exactly uh, okay. 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 Don't don't um don't go out. Don't play in the street or anything like that. You know. But my, my brother's saying that uh, people are uh, they're asking for blood donations for people who've had it, and is that true? Yeah, I mean, so, so I think there. So yeah, so there is. Uh, it's 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 like the the plasma. So I think like uh, I think Trump got that treatment actually. Um, mm. So so people. The, the thought is if you've had it in your system, spin it down, get some of your plasma. There's a bunch of good stuff in there, immune cell systems wise, and your body has uh, has developed to kind of fight the virus. Okay. So I think they're fi finding that there is some benefit to people um, getting those treatments. Um, again, you know, the I think I think the I don't know. I'm old school. I think the best treatment is prevention, right? Like so, it's. It's yeah. mask, masking up, gloving up. If you, if you, if you, if you are. Don't go you know, to fucking Tyson boxing parties and share food. You fucking idiot. <laughs> this is when you should tie. This is when you should. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? My friends, I have been there and trust me, it is not a happy place to be, but you don't have to be there. See, mental health is something that a lot of people haven't really focused on, especially during this pandemic right now where honestly, you're kind of just stuck with your thoughts, especially if you're just at home. See, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist and you can start communicating in under 48 hours hours. It's awesome. And remember, guys, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. I personally love online therapy because I could do it when I need it. And I could do it here at my house. Sometimes some of us don't feel comfortable talking to a person that we don't know in person to person because maybe you guys have anxiety like I do. So guys, visit betterhelp.com slash genius. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for my genius brain listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash genius. Once again, B E. T T E R H E L P dot com slash genius today. I should not promote pirating, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you it's should. so funny. It's like, I got, it, it's so stupid, you know, because I could clearly afford to buy this bike, <laughs> you know? I'm like, ah, um, he already you see that? You see that? You see that Nate Robinson one, man? I was worried for him. I was like, dang. I saw, I saw that and then like, um, somebody had had found it on the internet. I don't know who that person is. Anyways, so I thought it, I thought it had glitched. I was like, "What's it?" I saw the thing, and then I saw him fall. I was like, "Oh my god, my that internet dude, just died." That fool got knocked out to the underground railroad, dude. That fool got he got I, hit I was, in the head. He got I, was, I was worried. I was worried, man. I was like, "Damn, he like because there's certain posturing that you worry about, and he's just like the arm position and the stiffness." I was, I was literally worried about like brain injury. Yeah, I mean, like for him too. He, this is the weird thing too. Like, number one, that 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 white boy can box now. Like, he's been training for like two years with some really really great boxing trainers, and that kid's about that life. Is he pro boxer level? No, absolutely not. And everybody knows this. But Nate is Rock, his brother is his brother fighting Floyd? Yeah, his brother is fucking boxing Floyd Mayweather, dude. Like. And then there's this whole debate about whether it's really good for the sport or not. I, I don't know. Floyd is going to get – it's good for Floyd. He's about to get paid. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> well, how much more money does this motherfucker need, dude? I don't him. know. I saw him skating around uh, – I think, like, him and Swiss Beats or whatever, they had, like, a little challenge just skating around the, like, garages. I also saw him with all his cars skating around. I was like, my man, why, why do you need a flex like this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't even know why he needs this fight. I mean, I guess he wants to stay as relevant as possible, even though he's like a boxing hall of famer. But it's weird because you said that kid, Jake Paul, he's he's like, you're my height. He's like six foot one. Nate Robbins is like five. They say he's five, eight. He's five, seven. That guy's short as fuck. I've seen him in person. Like Man. he's like five, seven at most. Uh, Jake Paul, I think, you know, he they think they weighed in like 180 or something like that. But off off training, off the scale, he's probably close to like 190, 200 pounds. And then he sits yeah. over somebody who's five seven who has who's trained boxing maybe three months. It's like, yeah. well, what the fuck was going to happen? Like you're literally twice this dude's size. He's trained four times longer, and then you know he wins this boxing match, and they're like, oh, I'm like, I, I of course, like of course, what was going to happen? You know, they're like, oh, but Nate Nate Robinson's a, a a basketball athlete. Have you seen basketball players fight on the court? They all suck. 
you know. <laughs> Did I, did you, did you, I think I saw what for like put like Meta World Peace in there or something. I was like, God. Well, Meta World Peace, I, it's, it's, it's fucking hilarious. And Meta World Peace is huge too. You want to talk yeah, about man. the size difference? Yeah, I mean, I was like, well, if you're gonna f- fight an NBA player, then get one with some reach on them. Yeah, and you might as well get Meta World Peace at least a year to train. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, we saw that. I was just like, I was like, you know, the athleticism doesn't cross like that yeah did you uh (laughs) did you appreciate snoop dogg's commentary though snoop dogg was fucking funny man this one was like (laughs) he was like it's like my two uncles finding a barbecue (laughs) i was like yo this dude's fucking hilarious this dude's Uh, tripping dude uh, it was dude i mean that's literally what it was like man but tyson was uh tyson was beastly he he has some some dips i was like i was like i was and then did you see the interview at the end where he's like why wasn't anybody worried about me (laughs) That was the part that had me dying laugh. He was genuinely hurt. He sat there. He was just like, I, okay, he hasn't been boxed in three years. I, I, I haven't been boxed in 15. How come nobody's worried about me? And I looked at his face. He was actually hurt. His feet were hurt. hurt. <laughs> Bro, I was like, I was shocked when he said, I was like, I was like, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I think we, we got a in our in our hearts, we've always been like, it's Iron Mike. He's bulletproof. He's like, he's a beast. Like, he's like, we're all, everybody's worried about Roy. Everybody's like, oh, Roy's going to get murdered by Mike. And then everybody's like, what about me? And I was like, damn. Yeah, what is about me? I haven't fought in 15 years. <laughs> I was like, damn, dog, you chill, bro. Like, you're getting your feelings hurt and stuff. Mike, Mike Tyson still scares the fuck out of me. He's going to find out I keep imitating him and beat my ass. Nah, man, I hear, I hear he, uh, he he smokes a lot of marijuana. Now he's chiller. So hopefully, just, you know, just... Just sponsor his product. Just plug his product. You'd be all right. He's a. It's, it's interesting though watching like all these old boxers because I I never really got into boxing like that. So I never got to see you know Mike Tyson box box like yeah. during the time that he was boxing because I think he won his championship when we were like born. <laughs> so like like nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty eight around there. So uh, yeah, I don't remember what the year was where, where he had the famous like ear bite, but I remember being old enough to like to like see That's a clip of me like. Yeah, I remember. I remember being old enough when that happened, yeah. and I was like, I want, I wanted to get it, but my parents wouldn't pay, pay that kind of money for pay per view. They're like, eh, eh. Oh, none of us would. None of our parents would. Eh, we were, we eh. were spilling that shit through a black box. I know, I know. That's what I was trying. I was like, Dad, just like you know, your homie got the black box. Get the black. He's like, he's like, I will not risk my family for this Tyson fight. Eh. And I was like, I was like, Dad, just do you love me? <laughs> <laughs> I like how that's that's where he draws a line, a black box. <laughs> uh, my, my dad do some shady things, but I, I swear to God, he get he can hire. My dad had a Jamaican on deck for any kind of repair that went went down in my house. He's like, hey, I'll go get my friends. This guy is not certified to do plumbing. He'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, like John, man, I, 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 I'll fix it for you. I'm, and the next thing I know, dad's like, you can't flush it all the way. You gotta go just a little quarter and just let <laughs> it hang. Like a stipulation. Just let it hang there for a while and then it'll flush. And I'm like, damn, why can't you just pay for a repairman all the way? And he's like, no, they they charge too much. It's ridiculous. I know. Your dad's a very, very, very funny man. I still can't believe he's a security guard. Like, I know. I don't know what your dad's protecting. That's his his, his, favorite career. He just walk around talking to people. Like, if things go down, he ain't chasing nobody. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what I'm saying. I know your dad. Somebody jacks something, your dad's just like, it is what it is. But he would, he would be like, I seen him. He has a man. He's, I know. He's, he's tall. Eh, you know, he was white. Yeah. What, what else? What else uh, can you describe him as? Oh, yeah, I we had this um, mm, blue or green or something kind of shirt. <laughs> like, like, that's a great description. Eh, he was gay. Like, how do you know he was gay? I, I know he is gay. <laughs> like, all right, dude. I mean, he thought we were gay. I mean, I don't know. His gay dogs are a little His gay dogs are a little off. off. <laughs> Unless we have an announcement for people today, David. You know what? Let me tell you something. My stock would go up. <laughs> My stock. I found out recently, you know, because I'm in quarantine, I'm reading all this other shit, but there was like an article that was put out. I forgot who the celebrity was, but I guess he was supposed to announce uh, Sam Smith and he referred to him as a he. And I guess Sam Smith doesn't identify as a, as a he him. Now. Oh, is he is, is he no longer is he, does he is no longer gender binary or? I don't think so anymore. But I, I didn't know. I was like, oh shit! When did when did he do this? I, I think I heard about that, but I mean, I don't follow Sam Smith as closely. 
as some of my other favorite celebrities. Well, he came out as gay, so he was a him. Okay. Oh, he's uh, he's he's not male or female. He is something of the other. Yeah, so he's not in the binary. So it's not even one or one or the other camp. So it was kind of non-conforming. Refers to him as a that. Is it that? No, a they. Is it they or that? They. 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 Uh, there's a lot of different ones, but I, I think um, they is, is one they of the that, more common they ones. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They them is one of the more common ones. See, this is this is what I'm saying. Like, this is going to be a, a new thing for you know how the previous generation had to get used to the shit that we had we were coming up with. Now we have to get used to this part because this wasn't a part of our stuff growing up. Now, so now we have to be educated on the, the pronoun stuff. So, I mean, if 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 we had to like, I mean, just think about like our parents' generation. Like, you had to like talk to them about like like homosexuality. Like, you're just yeah. thinking about that. Like, like how you had to be like, you know, like no, it's not like a choice. Like they didn't like. Be like, it's like, oh, they're rebelling, so they're going to decide to be gay today. <laughs> like, no, that's, you know, like that's that's something that we had to talk to our parents about for some of us, and then and then and then and so I'm sure like now for us who didn't grow up with a lot of the, if we didn't have the fortune of having friends who represented a whole spectrum of like identification as far as like gender, then now we're we're getting educated. So yeah, we adapt. I know I've, it's going to be interesting for because um. I know one of my friend's kids, they're in college right now. And mm-hmm. when, uh, in, during orientation, they introduced their name and also now their pronoun. So oh, they, okay. what is your name? What is your major? And then what's your pronoun? And then, oh, like in, like in college? In college. And I think like, <clears throat> because this is something that's so new, uh, he was a little upset because- Like he, in front of the whole class or just like, like turn it in? in? In the dorm, in the dorm. Oh, okay. So they're doing like the dorm thing and they basically, they had to introduce themselves as who they are and then announce their pronouns. So this kid didn't know what was going on. He's not, he's not about that. He's not so much about that. He just doesn't know what this whole pronoun thing is, right? It's relatively yeah. new. It's not something that he was ever, ever had to be conscious of. And so he was in the class and they're like, he goes, what is that? You know? And then people looked at him like this dirty look, like, you know, kind of, you know, a little upset at him. He goes, I don't know what you mean by what pronouns. Like, aren't you a, is it like, what do you mean? Like, he was like trying to ask and being inquisitive, but he didn't know what was going on and nobody was explaining to him. They were just kind of giving him side eye. It's like, well, you know, yeah. you, you know, people also have to understand, like, if they didn't grow up around this or they don't know or it wasn't brought up, then they're not going to fucking know. This is new stuff. This is all new. And yeah, I, but, I, th- I think that there has to be a little patience to that learning process. Yeah, and the, you know, the problem with some, with a lot of people now is that they don't, they don't get it. You, you were just like that person not too long ago. So how fucking dare you get angry at somebody for not knowing because they're not knowledgeable about something that you didn't know that long ago either. So people like to, you know, have their nose up and judge other people and they rather chastise them and give them an opportunity to learn, which is so fucked up. And I think the cool thing about the whole Sam Smith situation, just to wrap it back, he, you know, he, he was like, Hey, it's all good. Like, you know, you called me a he, you didn't know. I just, I just appreciate that you tried and that's it. Which is dope, yeah. you know. I appreciate that because yeah. it creates great conversation, you know. Yeah, you know, and there's like a there's so many layers to this. I think like when I, when I think about it, I could only tie it back to like your own personal stories, right? Like, so I think um, for people who've never been around black people, right? Like, people will have some some questions for me, and and, and definitely like not every black person has to be the the educator for you. Right. Like, I think there's lots of people, lots of people who are very tired and very just like, I don't want to ex- to explain why I am upset about some of what's going on with the police, what's going on in, you know, a state that's, you know, 15 states away from me, why that connects to me, why that makes me scared, why that makes me scared for my siblings, for my children, whatever. Right. Um, but, you know, I think there has to be some of us who are patient enough to be able to like, just like, you know, meet people where they are. And, and, and I think, and I think those are the, the, I think that's the the true strength of living in a country as diverse as the United States is that you just have so many different people who have from different walks of life. And if you meet it, and if you meet ignorance with, um, with an openness to, to education, and of course, I'm not saying like, um, you know, not someone coming at you who's threatening your very existence. That's a whole different thing. But if, but if someone's coming at you with like a general, like, I don't know, I don't understand this. Can you tell me a little bit more? And, and, and you, and you, and you feel like you can be safe in sharing some of that information. I think it makes for a better world. 
Oh, 100%. Uh, I mean, so yeah. the person that uh, misgendered Sam Smith is uh, Sean Mendez. He's a musician, right? I feel like oh, I yeah, he did, he, did, he did with the Camila Cabello or something like that. They did a oh, song yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, Sam, Sam Smith basically said, I understand that Sean may not have known that, um, that Sam Smith pronouns yeah. are they, them, but, what, but why did no one correct them? Somebody tweeted. But, you know, like this is like Twitter is such a fucking toxic place, right? Like somebody wrote on Twitter. <laughs> Is the chat rooms is the chat chat rooms of old? Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Does Sean Mendes just misgender Sam Smith four times in a row? Really? Like, come on! How are you going to get mad at the dude for fucking like it's an act? First of all, him coming out as uh, non-binary, it's it's recent. You know, it's like it's like this. If I you know me as David for many years, right? And out of nowhere, I told you, hey, call me Pete from now on, and then you call me David like three or four. Do I go like, yo, what the fuck? I just told you. My name is Pete, you bitch. <laughs> you know? mm. But it's like, am I not going to give somebody the grace? Like, oh, he's been calling me David for fucking whatever, 30 years. You know, should, yeah. I, should I get mad at him for fucking it up? Same thing with, with Sam Smith. He came out as a gay male. He was yeah. male. He referred to himself as a he for the longest time. It's only until recent that he became a they and a them. So it's going to take yeah. a while for it to adjust. For you to come out and attack somebody like that is not going to create good conversation. This is what young people don't understand. You are not perfect. Like you, yeah. you, you keep judging people and getting mad at them like this. It only causes division. And I'm so sick of this shit. Ugh, it makes yeah. me angry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think there is definitely uh, <clears throat> there's people who are really quick to get angry on your behalf. And that, yeah. I mean, like, he wasn't so, even like upset. Some people, some people will come out and like, and you know, I'm sure there, there, there's definitely valid situations, but then people will come up and be like, how dare you ask him about his, how he, his stance on Black Lives Matter, why he doesn't like so-and-so yeah. X, Y, and Z. I'm like, well, uh, I could explain. I'm a, let, let, let me have this conversation, yeah. you know? And, 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 and um, you know, I think the conversation is the only place where that's how ignorance has changed, right? Like if there's one thing, like if you're ambushed at a table and you're like, the black date for a very like a full Caucasian family in the middle of the South and you're worried about your safety, that's, that's maybe a whole different situation. But if you're like literally just having a conversation with the coworker who didn't grow up in a very diverse place, then it's like, it's like, how will this person know? That's my, my that's my, always my thing. It's like, it's like I could get mad. I could get upset, but that person is going to be frustrated and they might get some, you know, they might feel a type of way because Every time they talk about this issue, people get mad and upset at them. So they get mad and upset at them. And that becomes, like you said, more divisive. And it doesn't lead to unification. So I think education gives you opportunity to bring people together. Yeah. And it's just, it's just like a, it's just very problematic that I see online. It's, you know, being angry and being like, so, like socially upset is the cool thing to do now. Rather than like common sense would dictate, hey, people are going to make mistakes. Right? Yeah. It's not like Sean Mendes was out there saying like, no, I'm going to call him a him and a he because he has a dick between his legs and I get to call him whatever the fuck I want. That, he, that is not what he was saying. He was like, oh, shit, that's right. You are not a he, him uh, yeah. anymore. And your pronoun is a they and a them. And it slipped my mind. And so this is what he said. He goes, oh, uh, Sam Smith, I'm so sorry for referring to you as a he for your jingle bell uh, introduction, jingle ball introduction it absolutely slipped my mind won't happen again sending you much love also absolutely love one of the funniest people i've ever met so what's the problem no i think i think i think that's completely appropriate you know and i think that's all it is right like it i, I think if we could get back into in the place of saying oh i'm sorry i don't know about that can you tell me a little bit more do you mind and you know and it's and it's perfectly okay if that person says no um and that person tries to find somebody else to teach them um, or if that person, ha you know, feels like they, they can, you know, teach somebody and then that person could apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Like, I didn't know that was offensive. You know, let's, let's go through this. So yeah. I mean, we're in this like weird space of like, um, because I think it's because of the internet too, like everything has become so just worldly accessible. Man, what the fuck, man? <laughs> this one's like Keep going. Grogu, Grogu's here, the child. I just feel like he's been like soaked in a lake and just dead for years. Why he's so pale? <laughs> so, 
It's New York, man. It's getting cold. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I swear yeah. to God, it's, I, I've, I've never been more ashy in my life. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm over here like just applying thicker creams. I'm like, it is chilly out here. I miss California. You're still using that, that Avino? <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, I, I, I had to step it up. I had to get some actual cream. I'm on that CeraVe now. CeraVe? I don't, I don't know. Sounds like a Oh, the, Cera, the CeraVe, the, the not, it's really good for your skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I know, man. I feel like I'm young again. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, my fucking legs are ashy as fuck. It's, it's been just been dry as hell lately, to be honest with you. How's the, how's things out in LA, man? You guys are closed down again? Oh, we closed out as fuck out here. Like there's nothing, there's nothing popping out, which is kind of fine. I, I think like Cuomo, no, no, ours is not Cuomo. Who the fuck is our guy? You got Garcetti. Garcetti. Talking about Cu- Cu- Cuomo's my guy. Yeah, Cuomo's your guy. Garcetti over here, like, like I said, I take, I understand this virus is very serious, but this will said no biking outside. No walking outside. I'm like, no. I'm sorry. He said no walking. No, like no walking, no biking outside. And I'm like, uh, that that's an order that is 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 asking to be violated. Exactly. I mean, like find a good medium. Don't don't go ham like that, bro. Like you're just asking for insurgency. I, I mean, as a as a physician, because I feel like everybody, like dude, like the the quarantine weight gain is real like a lot of my patients like 20 30 pounds like it is like and i and i'm and i'm i'm imploring them to like you know like i get it you're at home you're not moving like you used to you have to add some kind of movement routine in your day to you know and try to like limit your consumption of that bad stuff and the calories and it is so hard so like to say no biking no walking i'm just like are we just gonna turn into wally people yeah i mean i, I mean for me too it's like look I think people, it was put out too that with UV rays and being outdoors, like it, it kills a lot of the virus. And as long as you're six feet away, you should be fine, right? So in my mind, I'm like, I, there has to be a balance. Like you got to allow people to exercise. You know, there's a, that's something that should, I, I understand. Like if, like if you want to close gyms again, I get it. That's fine. You know, but allow me to walk outside. There's there's a lot of high risk uh certain situations right like like what they're saying like places like bars restaurants where people you know if you drink and you're eating people tend to like be a little bit speak a little louder the music the music's higher so they have to speak over people you're basically aerosolizing a lot of droplets Mm -hmm. so and it's indoors so you don't have a lot of fresh flowing air to kind of dissipate and 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 essentially dilute out the virus concentration in the air so it's so yeah, so I think when when you're talking about outdoor events, you know, people are a little bit more okay with it. That's why you have all the outdoor like comedians and stuff, right? Like they're doing shows and parking lots and all that stuff because the risk goes down a little bit as you're spread apart, as you have a flowing wind or whatever, as people are masked up and separated. So yeah, no, I, I agree with like the bars, movie theaters. Like we just closed down, rest- we're closing down restaurants on Monday. So that'll be tomorrow. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely one of those things where, it, I don't know, man, I think it, it's going to take a while for us to recover from this. Like, even like, yeah. even if if, the, if this vaccine is perfect and everybody wants to take it, which is not the case, um, you know, it's going to take a long time to just, just distribute it enough that we could go back to business as usual. Yeah. Um, maybe like at best, maybe by like next, you know, summer of 2021, um, maybe you know, just there's a lot of people in the country and a lot of places that unfortunately why, why don't have is, trust. Why is the virus so strong during like the cold season? Like what's the what's the reason behind that? Because summertime they said it was not so bad, but they said when it gets cold, it's going to be crazy. Like what, what is the How does that work? Well, I mean, if you think if you think about like uh, you think about the winter, right, it's. You know, people just have more secretions during this time of year, right? Like you're, you, you definitely, you, you're colder. You're, you know, you get a runny nose. All this different stuff. People tend to spend more time indoors. Um, I think, um, you know, when it's hot and summertime, people tend to be more in, uh, more outdoors, spread apart, doing fun things, anyways. But in the winter, you're cold. You're, you're, you're packed together things spread. So I don't like, you know, there's, there's certain, there's certain things that. You know, like this virus was 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 as strong like in Brazil as it was here. You know what I mean? Like we had so like I I don't think the heat necessarily killed this, but I think the change and kind of 
our behavior when it gets colder, like even right now, like in New York city, like it's like this past week has been like in the thirties to forties, sometimes 20 degrees when it was 20 degrees, uh, you know, but like, or, or high or low, you know, low thirties, you ain't going to do outdoor dining. You <laughs> out here like, you out here like, nah, that, that breeze cut through my clothes. I ain't doing this shit, you know? Yeah. Um, so you're going to want to go indoors. They only got so many seats. You're going to sit next to each other. You know, and then things are going to spread and then you're going to go home and you're not going to spend a lot of like when you're hanging out with your friends, you're not going to go out to the park and chill. You gonna stay at each other's house, you know, eating foods, playing games, watch television, whatever, spreading things amongst each other, going to your home, spreading to your family, doing more indoor activities and things just, you know, keep popping off like that. Um, yeah, the spike but, was still crazy right when it got cold. Like it, it was nuts how how many. Also the, but, the, but the holidays, too. I think the spike uh-huh. that we yeah. got right here, the three thousand, like the 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 record that we just got, I think it's, I think it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, because I know that. Um, I mean, everybody was gonna meet up and start gathering for Thanksgiving. It, it was gonna happen, and so uh, even when I went back for Thanksgiving, you know, with me and my brother and uh, Mariel, but we all got COVID tested before we left, and yeah. prior to that, I didn't see anybody for like two weeks, just in case. Yeah. Yeah, so I felt pretty safe coming through. It's it's hard, man, just because there's a lot. You know, this time of year, there's a lot more travel, a lot more gathering. Um, you know, um, it's it's just, and we know that shortly after that period of that travel, we start seeing the spike. If you think about it, the weekend that you caught it was Thanksgiving weekend. It was a weekend right after it because that was a fight. It was on Saturday, um, and then you know, and then and then your symptoms started about uh, what five days later on the Friday. So yeah. it's like, so that's kind of like you were, you were kind of in that Thanksgiving spike. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and you're not alone. Like a lot of, I have a lot of friends. My, one of my, one of the pediatricians at my clinic was uh, unfortunately one of her sons um, came home and it was just like, they didn't, she didn't have a big Thanksgiving. She just had her, her husband and her sons. And, and I saw her um, briefly on Friday cause I worked the day after Thanksgiving and then, um, and then on Monday, they're like, oh, hey, so-and-so is out. You know, they were tested positive for COVID. And, and um, did you guys have any contact? And we had to think about, like, contact. Did we have our mask off in our, like, did I have my mask off in my office as I was working by myself? Or did she come by? You know, all these things that I don't think about. Um, but yeah, man, every, like, there's lots of people who are just kind of that was being hit by this. Too. I was like, fuck. Uh, I think I saw a few people, but I had my mask on and I'm like, and I was, it was outdoors. So I'm like, yeah. okay, that's a, a lower risk situation. I'm like, yeah. fuck, but I don't let them know. It's like, Hey, it turns out I have COVID. You know, we saw each other three days ago. Yeah. You know, I wasn't symptomatic then, but I still saw you. We were outdoors. I was masked, but who knows? Cause you know, even for me, cause I saw, I saw a Khalif like two days before, two, three days before I was symptomatic. Yeah. And then uh, he had a commercial coming up. So if he had COVID, he would have lost money. He would have lost that job. Yeah. So, yeah. but because I was so paranoid about, you know, going to the, you know, the the Tyson fight at Bart's place, but I was next to him, I always wore a mask. So I was like, yeah. just in case. And thank God I did. Cause you know, he got, he got the, uh, the, the, what's it called? Not PRP, the, the, the what, what test? The PCR. The PCR test. So he got the PCR test um, like four or five times in a row because when you're I guess like before you shoot a lot of these commercial things or like movie stuff or whether it's a that or a commercial four or five days even before you shoot they keep keep testing you every day with the PCR test yeah well I mean I I, and I think that's the biggest lesson if anybody like takes anything home after this it's it's like you know it's not about you I mean hopefully you're okay but I always think about like the people that you can infect right like you have you have a lot of friends, you have a lot of like family, you have like, you know, your parents and my parents, they're of a certain age, right? They're vulnerable. And, and then, you know, you have loved ones who you live very close to. And I think a lot of people do. Um, so it's about, you know, if, even if you, in your, in your, um, you know, even if you're in your sense of hubris, you're like, I'll be, I, you know, maybe somebody you care about won't. And I think yeah, that's the biggest I mean, that's, thing. That's, that's like the biggest, like, that's the I think that's the hardest takeaway for people because it's hard to to do things when you don't see it directly affecting you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, when they say things like, "Oh, well, I'm young and I'll be fine," that's like I, that's cool, you know. But 
what what does fine mean for somebody else it's fine like for me like was yeah physically i was okay but mentally i was destroyed like so uh, was that was i fine probably not like i've never really faced quote-unquote depression until recently i'm guessing that's what it was i don't know how if i could clinically diagnose it but your boy was fucking losing his mind dude like losing my fucking mind so could you imagine like what that does to somebody else maybe who isn't as mentally strong as i am right how, how bad would it have been and i don't i don't really know so there's like other adverse effects and i think when when people think about oh i'm not being selfish because i'm around young people that, that that's a very loose that's very loose in terms of what you think being selfish is right because you're not looking at the outward effects you could have on, on the ripple effect scale right like it they might not die, but mentally they could affect them. They might lose like job opportunities. They're not to be around to be around their family. There's other things besides death. So yeah. this is this is the problem that I'm having with a lot of people. And this is why also I'm disappointed that I that I stayed there. Like when I when I went there and I saw a lot of people, I should have left. But I didn't. Yeah. So you know that's my bad. So I have to take the fucking L. And I paid for it. Yeah. But I mean I think I think but then you get you get a chance to come and talk to people about this, right? Because I mean, I don't think you're alone. Like I think um, all of us, especially as we get into November, December, right? And there's gonna be like, I, I, you know, there's and there's gonna be an opportunity to see friends, family, um, all these people. Like, you know, you think about the choices that you make and the ramifications that they'll have. And some of these are very hard choices. Like, you know, um, you sometimes have a family member who's older and you don't know if next year you'll have a chance to see them. So you yeah. have to make choice, you know, and, and, you know, as hard as these choices are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taken back to kind of um, earlier in the year when I was working in the ICU and we just, because of how bad the infection was, people, you, you couldn't have family members come see you when you're sick. Like you have like one or two, like you have like one visitor in the ICU and, and, you know, ICU is an intensive care unit. People die there, you know, sometimes they get better. Sometimes they die. Um, so just imagine people who it's, you don't even get a chance to say goodbye to somebody you cared about because of how bad this virus is. And yeah. that's how, that's the reality. That's a reality that a lot of families are dealing with. And if we, you know, can find part of, you know, you know, take that, you know, think about that and think about the sacrifice of us making a choice to, to, to leave a party, to not get together with a bunch of people, you know, it, it, it may, it could save somebody. Yeah. Um, um, and, it, and, and, you know, and I think that's a, that's the thing that like, I think when you're a little older and um, I, I don't even want to put an age on it, but I think when you're a little bit aware of kind of other people when you're you, when you're you start thinking about others, you know you start thinking you start thinking about that and you're like, yo, I would really love to go hang out with all my friends from high school because we only get to see each other this time of year every year. But you're like, maybe this year ain't the it ain't the time. Yeah, like even for uh, this Thanksgiving, we all did the we did the Zoom Thanksgiving Friendsgiving thing. Yeah, it's yeah, dead. man. You know, we we just did what we had to do. It's what it is, you know. Even this year, man, I know I know um, going. Going back home, of course, going to be super safe and trying to see family members. But you know, I want to see uh, our mutual friend, Phoebe. I know you're out there. You know, she knocked up as hell, but you know, she's pregnant. I ain't gonna go over to you know risk you know giving it to my future nephew. You know what I mean? I can't. Be, no, I, can't I was be supposed to see it this Thanksgiving, and even though I tested negative, I got a little nervous. I'm like, eh, I'm, not, I'm probably not. She she pregnant though. She prego. You know what I mean? So I'll see you next year. It's like, it, and. You know, and I think, you know, you know, I want to see her kid and we'll see Joey and we'll see that that family. You know what I mean? Like, we have to make these sacrifices because no, it'll be my better. My parents don't even want me to come back. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> they say Christmas and like, stay. I'm like, all right. <laughs> They're like, yeah, don't come. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Damn, that's cold, brother. Yeah. That's cold. They told me to stay my ass home. Well, guys, <laughs> that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, came out clean with the COVID. Uh, no longer positive, but past 10 days, just think about, you know, just, just think about how it can affect other people aside from the death part. There's just crazy things that are happening right now. Um, you know, fucking this guy is stupid Yoda. And then, bro, your, your, your hair is about to be like ours, right? Oh, like, don't say that, jo man. Join it, bro. Baby. The hairline's yeah, the God. Look Woo. at that, brother. Look at that. Look at that. That's naturally aerodynamic. You know what I mean? 
You'll be yeah, faster on your bicycle. I remember when this full of hair was going away. This shit was all patchy and shit. Looked like somebody was chewing on the backside of his head. <laughs> you, do we want? Do we want to talk about your your ability to grow a beard, David? Look hey, like you got like you got like three whiskers. You got like three whiskers. The one going up here, one going here, throwing up the west side side, bro. What the hell? It is Come actually on. exactly seventeen. <laughs> it is exactly seventeen hairs. Eight hairs, seven uh, hairs. So you're like you like you're like a pretty cat. Look at you. Yeah, you know, I had to do what I had to do. But that's the episode, you guys, and we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.